Welcome to this fifth Sunday after Pentecost worship service at Church of Our Savior in Fond du Lac. Hello, I'm Reverend Jerry Groth, and it is good to be with you again as we come to you in this recorded worship service. Today is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, July 5th, the day after July 4th, our Independence Day, a day for renewing our commitment to the way in which our Lord Jesus Christ leads us to live our lives as followers of him first, and a day for us to remember that we are committed citizens and should be committed citizens of our country. May God bless us and lead us as we worship together. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in singing the gathering hymn. Oh, 
Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray the prayer of the day. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourselves, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Zechariah 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace to all the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your strong house, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord. I read portions of Psalm 
145, the psalm appointed for this day. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion over is over all your works. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bound down. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The second reading is taken from the seventh chapter of Romans, beginning at the 15th verse. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, for the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies at my hand. For I delight in the law of the Lord in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel appointed for this day is from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11. I read the words. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary, and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I begin the sermon for this day. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. July 4th was Saturday. Yesterday, that is. Today is July 5th, one day after. 
Fireworks have already been fired off. The brats have been put on and taken off our grills. They've been eaten, onions and ketchup, please. Potato salad is gone. Guests, if we had them in our home, have left. We saw the headlights, the rear taillights of their cars as they drove away. Let me say it again, July 4th is gone. July 5th is here. And the words of the Lord from Matthew's Gospel stands before us today on July 5th. So what shall we compare this generation, the Master says? Jesus asks that of us. Are we like children sitting in a marketplace, calling to playmates, come dance, we will to you to mourn, and you did not mourn? Do those words mean that the people in Jesus' day didn't know what they were about? Did they dance? Did they mourn? Do those same words mean, as they are applied to us, that we don't know either, we're confused? Do we dance? Do we mourn? Senator John Danforth, an ordained Episcopalian priest, and a former United States senator said, America is more than a place to hang your hat. It represents a value system most of us believe in strongly. That value system has to do with the worth of human beings wherever they are. We believe that lives are worth saving. But do we dance? Do we mourn? It is said that when the Constitution of our country was finally approved, Benjamin Franklin walked out of Constitution Hall, and he was approached by citizens of Philadelphia who asked of him, Dr. Franklin, do we have a monarchy or a republic? Benjamin Franklin answered, we have a republic, but only if we can keep it. And those words ring true for us today. The state of our land these days is grim. There is disease. Do we wear masks? Do we not? Shall we dance? Shall we mourn? Do our votes count? Shall we dance? Shall we mourn? We are created equal, but are we? Is there democracy for all people? Rich, poor, black-skinned people, brown-skinned people, white-skinned people. The powerful, the weak. Shall we dance? Shall we mourn? If any of us get sick, can we all get the same care we need? Can we all get a solid education? Do we have a democracy that blesses all citizens, the poor ones, the rich ones, the powerful ones, the weak ones? Do we dance? Do we mourn? And do we as Christians, you and me, those in super churches, And those in churches struggling, those in big and thriving and well-known churches, and those in churches where the doors are barely kept open because the people just aren't there and the contributions aren't there either, will we make it in our time? Do we dance? Do we mourn? There are three kinds of patriots, William Sloan Coffin writes, two bad, one good. The bad ones are the uncritical lovers and the loveless critics. The good ones carry on a lover's quarrel with this country. The best of this country, the good patriots believe, is yet to be. But that means lots of work, lots of devotion, and lots of soul-searching ahead. How do we love America? I quote William Sloan Coffin again. 
Don't say my country coffin advises right or wrong. That's like saying my grandmother drunk or sober. That kind of attitude takes none of us anywhere. Not our country, not anyone, not anything. Coffin goes on to say, don't salute our flag, but don't burn it either. Wash it and make it clean. So how do we love America? With eyes wide open, that's how. With an informed mind, with a holy impatience that wants this nation always to be as good as its best values. That what we are, what our Constitution says we are equal is how it is. That's what we have, and that's what we want, with the courage to care and discuss and participate and vote. How do we love America? By enlarging with purpose our circle of friends, and I cannot urge that enough. By getting to know people of other races, black ones, brown ones, yellow ones, Skin color shall not divide us. And we love this nation with a vision, a vision of compassion, the same kind of compassion we have seen in Jesus and have learned from Jesus. And we choose right over wrong. We choose compassion over hard-heartedness. We choose to embrace rather than dominate. We choose to make friends rather than divide. That's us. We choose to love over hate. We choose equality for all people with no one overlooked and pushed aside. We choose to pray and to sing hymns with all people. Because, because there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, and all people are redeemed by the blood and in the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let his name be praised. Amen. the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray the prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the nations, nations all over this world. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations which must be engaged in. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed, especially Sheila, Norma, Jean, Barb, Nancy, Larry, Brian, Ted, Fran, Bobby, Danielle, Rachel, Troy, Fran, Robert, Valeska, Linda, Carol, <coughs> Renee, Sandy, Duffy, Sherry, Brad, Fran, Carson, Don, Jan, Doug, Gilbert, Libby, Wendy, Jeff, Kay, Christina, Diana, and Leo. Take their yoke upon you, O Lord, and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for this congregation. Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain this building. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation and the world as we face uncertainties around the coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are sick or are in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to health care workers, our heroes, especially as they work caring for others at work that puts them at great risk. Guide as we consider how best to respond to our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now may our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Please join in singing the sending hymn. Thanks be to God.